the setup that I'm currently using for my new project is just so fucking productive. It's insane. It's basically a complete uh, full stack Golang project that I'm building uh, for my new side hustle, which by the way, I'm going to try to scale to 5K monthly recurring revenue in six months. It's a challenge that I'm doing here for the community and for YouTube. Uh, and I'm basically documenting every single video, every single step of the process on my Patreon page. And of course, sometimes on my live streams, right? So right now I'm at the building phase. So uh, I'm building this completely in Golang uh, and every video will is on the Patreon page, right? So check it out. It's basically uh, Stripe uh, integration and all that stuff, the whole shebang. So if you are a coder that want to learn more about Golang and how to implement that stuff, so that's something for you. If you are an entrepreneur that actually want to learn the ins and outs, how to do that stuff from somebody that actually did that for his whole his life, my patron is also for you. So come and jump into that thing. The next thing, guys, very important, the full-time GoDev is at a summer sale of 50% off. So for the people that basically were complaining that it's too expensive, 50% off, grab your chance and uh, make a little dance, right? The vacation is coming, summer deals. We, of course, need to make sure we have our summer body, but also we need to spend some time in learning and improving ourselves. So check that out also. Cool, so basically, what am I building here? Uh, Upsert, I'm gonna give you a quick demo. Uh, we have this scuffed pricing page, which I still need to um, fix here and there, right? Um, then, of course, I can sign in, sign in with Google. Um, and then I have this, this dashboard page so I can hit and track domains, for example, send it .sh, and if I track this thing, it's basically going to track it, uh, give me a status and all that stuff, I can go inside of that, stop tracking if I really want. And basically what's gonna happen is that if you go to our account here, you can see uh, I'm going to notify you seven days before it's going to expire, so you can take action and uh, your customers will be happy. So if you are somebody that basically have multiple SSL domains, uh, multiple certificates, from different providers and you uh, have confluent tasks to basically remember you that something is going to expire, this tool is for you, right? And you could say, yeah, but Certbot, yeah. But Certbot sometimes also fails. And not everybody is using Certbot, especially not in the corporate world. So if you think this is interesting for you, give me a mail, jump into my Discord, subscribe to my channel. Yes, all right. So uh, that's that thing. So basically, uh, yeah, it's co it's complete full stack goal and thingy. Uh, we also have some some more in depth uh, low level stuff like scraping and pulling these um, <laughs> these certificates uh, in in go routines and all that stuff. But hey, if you want to learn about that, check the Patreon. All right. Cool. So how is this actually built, right? So basically, uh, I'm gonna cover these topics. So first of all. Why fiber? I'm using Go Fiber. There are a lot of frameworks out there, but I'm using Go Fiber. Why? Because Fiber has that little jazz, that little tiny jazz that I need to do a lot of cool stuff to be as productive, to be even more productive than all these other frameworks out there. Right? And what is this? It's that. Let me show you. It's going to be disable. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the disable startup message. No, it's pass locals to views. Right. So pass locals to views uh, gives me the ability to create these beautiful functions here. For example, CSS helper function, batch for status, uh, format time, days left. So let me show you here, view domains view. Show actually, to be honest. You can see we have batch for status here. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna check the status and render a, a batch for it. So we don't need to have complex stuff in our views, right? Uh, also, what we could do is in a Navi base, we have this beautiful CSS helper, right? Which basically uh, gives us a nice um, import stuff for our CSS and find it and all that stuff, right? You could do some caching if you really want or, or not cache, hey, it is what it is. So that's very important. Also, uh, because why in middleware, we also have this, right? We're gonna check if there is a user and if there is a user, then if it is an authenticated user, we can set that in the locals, which basically means in our navigation, we can directly or everywhere in our templates, we always have access to a user, right? So you could just check if user, right? Because if it's nil, it's not gonna be there. And if it's not nil, then that is an authenticated user. So it's so easy uh, to yeah do some authentication authorization in, in my applications without the need of, of uh, of shenanigans, right? So something else um, that I set up is this basically. So we are at the free tier, right? We are at the free um, 
payment plan. So for example, uh, I can add another domain, uh, send it as zip, right? I can add that domain. So now I have two domains, but the free tier only can track two domains. So what can happen? What will happen if I add facebook.com, for example? It normally should give me, with your current plan, you can track up to a total of two domains. So, and then I can update it uh, basically here, right? So uh, I also have this beautiful flash thing set up, right? Let me show you this real quick. Um, handlers domain, you see? So what's happening here is, um, here for example, Wait, where is this thing? Here, for example, uh, if the domains and the counts, so the, the domains the user already have and uh, the domains he wanna add, if that's basically bigger than the max trackings, which is coming from his account, then I will add some flash data and will redirect them back, right? With this beautiful sentence, flash with data, redirect domains new. Uh, and then I have actually set up, again, in my middleware, here, upstairs, above uh, with flash c locals flash is values right so that basically means that i've everywhere in my application i have access to my flash without the need of injecting that in my con in my controller in my handler right um, so i can just actually access my flash um, let me show you that domain new here for example here if flash domains errors boom i render this stuff right if flash.max trackings, boom, I render this stuff. You know what I mean? It's super easy, it's super productive. And that will basically bring us to the next step. Why templates? Well, why templates? You need to understand for the people, um, for the developers that are basically my age, which is 36, it's very old, I know. They will realize that the way we started is exactly the way the meta in the development space, in the technology space is shifting back to. The only thing we used was rendering HTML directly from the server. And if we, willing, if we wanted to do some front-end manipulation with JavaScript, then we added that in with some sprinkles of jQuery uh, or later on, there was other frameworks, I don't know, maybe Backbone or something like, like the, the small little frameworks that you uh, just added onto, on top of your application on your HTML, which made it easier to manipulate the DOM, right? Uh, if you really want to, but, but by the end of the day, how many times do you need to do fancy stuff, right? For example here, I, I, can, I can have this one, right? Look at that, this beautiful domain thing. I, I don't have JavaScript for that, you know what I mean? There's no need for, right? That's the only fancy thing this application is doing, by the way, right? Um, so yeah, and it's Golang, so you don't need any loaders because it's so fast that you don't need a loader. You know what I mean? Um, that's questionable, right? Uh, leave some questions, leave leave some some remarks in the comments if you wanna if you wanna bash about that. It's no problem. It's good for the algorithm. Uh, <clears throat> so templates, it's it's easy. You basically do what all these frame like these next GS and these Celtics of of today, right? All these single page applications are shifting back to server side rendering. And of course, they give you also the, op the opportunity to do client side rendering. So you have server side components and client side components, but that's nasty because sometimes you do a local host and you, it's crazy. Sometimes you, you wanna do client stuff in your server and server stuff in your client and then you need to do a check in the next GS, like, am I on the server? Am I on the client? Uh, it's just, it's depressing, right? And most of the time you're not gonna use all that front end shenanigans, right? Of course, if you wanna make a super drag and drop and, and uh, manipul DOM manipulation heavy uh, application, okay. I totally agree, but most of the time for your project, you don't need that, right? So, and you can see that all these single page applications are more shifting to, uh, towards the server, right? Check. And then you could say, yeah, but uh, now we need to basically render the whole application. That's not true. You can use something like TurboLinks, Hotwire TurboLinks, check that out on Google uh, to basically only render what you need, but that's something uh, for later on, right? Templates is super easy for me. It's super productive. I don't need to hassle with JavaScript, which makes no sense. I also don't need to hassle with TypeScript, which definitely makes no sense. Um, hey, it is what it is. The next thing is what kind of database I'm using. I'm actually using Postgres, which is basically uh, thanks to Superbase, right? 
I'm using Superbase. A lot of people on my streams ask why. Why Superbase? Why not uh, Pocketbase? Because it's written in Go. I don't fucking care. Pocketbase is my SQL and it doesn't have a, a, a backend client. It doesn't have a Go client. And yeah, Superbase is just, I, I have the most robust database in the fucking world. In my opinion, it's Postgres. You can never, never, never do something. Everybody's going to all this fancy technology, but pff, why? You know what I mean? Postgres, it's a fucking, it's an elephant that you will never take down, right? Um, so Superbase gives me the ab uh, ability to use Postgres, to actually access Postgres directly, right? I don't use Superbase client, look at that. So I'm basically using Bun, which is a query builder. It's not an ORM, it's a query builder. Um, I'm using the Bun thingy. And very important is I don't need to self-host my Superbase, uh, my Postgres database. Superbase is taking care of that, so I don't need to hassle with uh, backups and all that stuff. But Superbase also gives me authentication, right? I don't want to write my authentication always from scratch. It's just... Yeah, why would you, right? It's a very critical part. And if you have something that basically takes care of the authentication for you, email verification, changing passwords with uh, emails, um, uh, one-time sign-ins, uh, one-time passwords actually, and for example, also OAuth, right? Sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, sign in with GitHub, just with a finger clip, clip and it's a finger clip, flip, whatever you want to call it, and it's done. So yeah. Super, super simple. And if I want to later on migrate to something self-hosted, that's no problem because it's Postgres. So I can just dump it and import it. And then I need to just, the only thing I need to do is modify or rewrite my authentication because I'm not using Superbase anymore. I'm using a self-hosted stuff, right? Pocketbase, Golang, very nice project. No backend client, specifically made for a frontend, which actually Superbase also, but still, um, I want to use Postgres and not my SQL, my SQL, uh, and not SQLite because SQLite is not scalable. It's only scalable by throwing more RAM and CPU. Of course, am I ever going to be at that scale? Most likely not, but still, right? Postgres, amazing. Arrays, JSONB, hey, Anthony GG. Right, the next thing is my migrations, uh, very simple. Uh, I do make, drop, right? Uh, drop everything, press yes, boom, everything is dropped, make, make, and everything is back up, right? Make, run. You see, make, 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 and it's done. So you can already see that uh, booting up your application is just so fucking fast. Compiling is so fast. Deploying, you don't need fancy stuff. You don't need, you just go to your server, you pull your code, and you do make, run, and everything is fine, right? And you put an Nginx in front of that, no fancy dockerization stuff. Why, right? It's very simple. The only thing we want is put our project open in the wild so people can use it, right? And then we can iterate on that. You know what I mean? Uh, we are a single man team and a single man team needs to be lean and mean. So forget all this fancy technology and make it bored. That's why I'm calling this the board stack, all right? Uh, the next thing we have is basically um, Tailwind, right? I'm using Tailwind in the front end. So basically, you can, wait, I need to basically sign out real quick here. Boom, please sign in again with Google, yes. All right, so you can see we have this beautiful tailwind. I zoomed in, guys, don't, it's 150 zoomed in, so don't worry about how terrible it looks, right? Um, yeah, I mean, tailwind, daisy UI, very simple. How does it work? Well, uh, you can see I have, Package JSON tailwind config, everything is happening with parcel, right? The parcel thingy here. Uh, it is running in my, I think it's here, you see? NPM run dev, and it's basically waiting, it's bundling everything for me, right? It's bundling my JS files, it's bundling my CSS files. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the thing. I also have Stripe set up, so I'm basically, uh, right now, at the moment, I'm integrating Stripe, right? Uh, it's all, all the videos are on uh, Patreon, will be on Patreon. Uh, I'm, Patreon is episode, I think, five or six. I'm always sitting on 11 on my PC. I'm releasing one every single day, right? Uh, so if you want to know how to use Stripe with Golang, but I mean production stuff Stripe, then uh, you should definitely be a part of the private Patreon community, right? Yes, guys, like I said, Fiber, pass locals to views, Templates, amazing. 
It's amazing templates. You just write HTML and that's it. It's amazing. Super base, perfectly fine. No authentic, I don't need to write my authentication. Postgres, robust, no self-hosting, easy peasy, right? Migrations, Golang migrate, go migrate, easy. Tailwind, because Tailwind, right? This is UI because we don't want to write. We want to have something that uh, is beautiful uh, right off the bat, so we don't need to do a lot of uh, uh, styling, right? That's it, guys. This is, so now you could say, last but not least, why Golang? Why not something like Next.js or PHP? Um, questionable. PHP, no typing. Python, no typing. Ruby, no typing. A lot of memory. Python, dependency hell all the fucking time. Small projects, super good. Large projects, you're gonna get wrecked, right? Uh, PHP, good, but the same thing is you have all that stuff at PHP and, and it's just, ah, I don't know. Uh, so if you have the best of both worlds, which I think this is, of course, in, in the beginning, you need to set things up, right? You need to set up your go migrate, you need to set up all that stuff, your, your, your middleware here, right? You need to, all these frameworks have that right off the bat. But um, once you have these things, even that, this view helpers, look at that, this is active four, this is in my uh, side nav, look at this, right? It's basically this, active four, look at this, how beautiful this is. Active four domains, it's going to light up this thing, right? You see, it's following this stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, account here, boom, 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 log out, sign in, easy, boom, sign in with Google. It's super fast, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I think Golang is, it's amazing. It's productive, it's statically typed, it, it's catching a lot of errors. Of course, you can write bad code, but you can write bad code in every single fucking language. For me, key, fast deployments, single binaries. Uh, also, look at that, when I need to basically uh, create some uh, domains. Uh, domains new, for example. Uh, handlers, actually. Here, I have this thing, look at that. Each. You see, create all domains. Try to do this in another language, right? As clean as this. And basically, if a user adds 100 domains, we're basically gonna pull them all in, a, in an asynchronous, in a go routine, right? And then we have this context with timeout, two seconds. So I give every poll two seconds a time to complete, right? Otherwise it's gonna hang and it's going to be, yeah, you could have some, some not some, not memory leaks, but you know what I mean? I don't want it to take longer than two seconds. I want to have a deterministic approach on checking these certificates. Try to do that as clean as, try to do this as clean as I did it in an other language. There is nobody on fucking earth that can do that. And if you can, leave it in the, show me in the comments. Let us be honest. I'm not saying that Golang is the, the best language out there. It's just, it works. It just works. You know what I mean? Simple. Anyway, if you like the video, if you like this 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 overview, if you want to know how this is built uh, from scratch, all the videos are on my Patreon. Well, the videos will be coming up on my Patreon page. Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, jump in my, into my Discord community, and I thank you to believe in me, to support me, and I'll see you in the next live stream or video. Bye-bye.